Subscribe to this channel for real time video updates. Solids are hard like cement, soft like gold, brittle like eggshells, elastic like rubber, malleable like copper, heavy like lead, light like balsa wood, hence its multiple applications. Today we are discussing some important problems in the unit solid state. So the first problem, if the radius of an octahedral hole is R and the radius of a constant particle forming closed packing is capital R, derive a relation between small r and capital R. So we are asked to find a relation between the radius of an octahedral hole and the radius of a constant particle forming the closed packing. So here I have tried to draw the constant particles forming the closed packing. That is the larger spheres, four larger spheres are there. And you can see the void inside the larger spheres. Actually the octahedral void is formed by six spheres, three from the first layer and three from the second layer. But here for convenience, I have drawn only four spheres. 3 below and 1 above or 3 above and 1 below. Anyway, you can consider. So inside the octahedral hole, there is a constant particle which can be a cation. Now, we have drawn a square connecting the centers of all these constant particles forming the closed packing. And the radius of the octahedral hole or the radius of the cation inside the octahedral hole is small r and the radius of the constant particle forming the closed packing is capital R. Now inside the square you have a triangle ABC which is a right angled triangle and in this right angled triangle the side BC BC is equal to 2 into r where r is the radius of the constant particle and the sides ab and ac equal to ac equal to r plus r now i've taken the triangle ABC for reference we can apply Pythagoras theorem here BC square is equal to AB square plus AC square now what is BC BC is 2R so 2R the whole square is equal to AB and AC AB is equal to AC is equal to R plus R. So we can substitute that R plus R the whole square plus R plus R the whole square. Now that is 2R the whole square is equal to 2 into R plus R the whole square. So taking 2 to the left side 2R the whole square by R sorry by 2 is equal to r plus r the whole square so keep this in mind 2r the whole square by 2 is equal to r plus r the whole square so 2r the whole square by 2 is equal to r plus r the whole square now to take the square root 2r by root 2 is equal to r plus r hope you understood that step we removed the square by taking the square root so we got 2r by root 2 is equal to r plus capital r now 2 by root 2 is root 2 into r I'm taking the capital R from the right side to the left 
so it comes minus r is equal to small r and take r outside r into root 2 minus 1 is equal to small r so I'm again writing r into root 2 minus 1 is equal to small r now the value of root 2 is 1.414 minus 1 is equal to r so r into 0 0.414 is equal to r so you got the relationship between the radius of the octahedral void small r and the radius of the constant particle forming the closed packing so small r is equal to 0 0.414 into r the second problem analysis shows the formula of nickel oxide to be ni 0.98 O 1.00 what fractions of nickel exist as Ni2 plus and Ni3 plus so looking at the compound we can confirm that it is a non stoichiometric compound because the whole number there is no whole number ratio for this compound we can see 0 0.98 as the composition of nickel to that of oxygen so in this compound there is a deficiency of nickel now we are asked to find out what are the fractions of ni2 plus and ni3 plus in this compound ni 0.98 o 1.00 so due to this deficiency that is replacement of Ni2 plus with Ni3 plus there exists a deficiency of nickel and we can take the number of nickel atoms as 98 number of nickel atoms as 98 so 0.98 can be taken as 98 and let the number of oxygen atoms you can write it as instead of 1.00 we can write it as 100 now let the number of Ni2 plus in Ni let it be X Ni2 plus let it be X and Ni3 plus will be 98 minus X because the total number of nickel atoms is 98 so x is the number of Ni2 plus and 98 minus x is the number of Ni3 plus. In an electrically neutral compound, the sum of the oxidation states of all the elements will be equal to 0. So applying that to this particular compound, we can write 2 into x where 2 is the oxidation state of Ni2 plus and x is the number of Ni2 plus plus 3 the oxidation state of Ni3 plus into the number of Ni3 plus is 98 minus x plus oxygen oxygen has oxidation state minus 2 number of oxygen atoms is 0 so the sum of this should be equal to 0 in an electrically neutral compound. Now we can solve this equation. 2x plus 3 into 98 is 294 minus 3x minus 200 is equal to 0. So we can take the like terms to one side 294 minus 200 is equal to minus 2x plus 3x so that is 94 equal to x so we got the number of ni2 plus as 94 now 
the number of ni 3 plus will be 98 minus x that is 98 minus 94 is equal to 4. Now we have to find the fraction. The fraction will be 4 by 98 is the total number of nickel atoms. So 4 by 98 is equal to 0 0.4. Zero 04 that is 4 percent. Now the fraction of Ni2 plus will be Ni2 plus will be 94 by 98 which is equal to 0 0.96 approximately equal to 96 percentage. So we got the fraction of Ni3 plus and Ni2 plus in the compound Ni0.98 O1.00. Next problem. If NaCl is doped with 10 raised to minus 3 mole percent of strontium chloride, what is the concentration of cation vacancy? So hope you remember the impurity defect. So here we have an impurity defect with NaCl doped with strontium chloride impurity and in the data we can understand that for every 100 NaCl 10 raised to minus 3 moles of strontium chloride is present as impurity that means the number of moles of NaCl is 100 then the number of moles of strontium chloride is 10 raised to minus 3 now the electrical neutrality is maintained in this compound also since the sodium ion is plus 1 charged and the strontium ion is plus 2 charged for every 2 Na+, only one strontium ion is needed to maintain the electrical neutrality. So the number of cation vacancy will be equal to the number of strontium ions present in the NaCl crystal. So in 100 moles, there are 10 raised to minus 3 moles of strontium ions and that is also equal to 10 raised to minus 3 is also equal to the number of moles of cation vacancies cation vacancies now we have to find out the number of cation vacancies in one mole of sodium chloride in 100 moles it was it is 10 raised to minus 3 so in 1 mole it will be 10 raised to minus 3 by 100 that is 10 raised to minus 3 into 10 raised to minus 2 so that is equal to 10 raised to minus 5 moles now the concentration is 10 raised to minus 5 into Avogadro number you will get the concentration 10 raised to minus 5 into Avogadro number is 6.022 into 10 raised to 23 that is 6.022 into 10 raised to 18 per mole so in one mole there are 6.022 into 10 raised to 18 cation vacancies so hope you understood the question NaCl is doped with 10 raised to minus 3 mole percent of strontium chloride in 100 moles of NaCl you have 10 raised to minus 3 SR2 plus ions or 10 raised to minus 3 cation vacancies and this is in 100 moles so in one mole we calculated it as 10 raised to minus 5 moles 
so the number of cation vacancies in one mole will be got by multiplying 10 raised to minus 5 with Avogadro number because one mole contains Avogadro number of particles so that will give us the result 6.022 into 10 raised to 18 cation vacancies per mole because we were asked to find out the concentration so these are the problems I thought you'll find a bit difficult to solve try doing the remaining problems in the exercises try to solve as much as problems as you can and if you have any doubt please write to me so this is the last video in the unit solid state so we'll see in the next session with a new unit solutions so till then have a nice day thank you Subscribe to this channel for real-time video updates.